Chapter 73 That Divine Providence Does Not Exclude Freedom of Choice From this it is also evident that providence is not incompatible with freedom of will. Indeed, the governance of every provident ruler is ordered either to the attainment, or the increase, or the preservation of the perfection of the things governed. Therefore, whatever pertains to perfection is to be preserved by providence rather than what pertains to imperfection and deficiency. Now, among inanimate things the contingency of causes is due to imperfection and deficiency, for by their nature they are determined to one result which they always achieve, unless there be some impediment arising either from the weakness of their power, or on the part of an external agent, or because of the unsuitability of the matter. And for this reason, natural agent causes are not capable of varied results, rather, in most cases, they produce their effect in the same way, failing to do so but rarely. Now, the fact that the will is a contingent cause arises from its perfection, for it does not have power limited to one outcome but rather has the ability to produce this effect or that, for which reason it is contingent in regard to either one or the other. Therefore, it is more pertinent to divine providence to preserve liberty of will than contingency in natural causes. Moreover, it is proper to divine providence to use things according to their own mode. Now, the mode of acting P6 peculiar to each thing results from its form, which is the source of action. Now, the form whereby an agent acts voluntarily is not determined, for the will acts through a form apprehended by the intellect, since the apprehended good moves the will as its object. Now, the intellect does not have one form determined to an effect, rather, it is characteristic of it to comprehend a multitude of forms and because of this the will can produce effects according to many forms. Therefore, it does not pertain to the character of providence to exclude liberty of will. Besides, by the governance of every provident agent the things governed are led to a suitable end. Hence, Gregory of Nyssa says of divine providence that it is the will of God through which all things that exist receive a suitable end. But the ultimate end of every creature is to attain the divine likeness, as we showed above. Therefore, it would be incompatible with providence for that whereby a thing attains the divine likeness to be taken away from it. Now, the voluntary agent attains the divine likeness because it acts freely, for we showed in Book 1 that there is free choice in God. Therefore, freedom of will is not taken away by divine providence. Again, providence tends to multiply goods among the things that are governed. So, that whereby many goods are removed from things does not pertain to providence. But, if freedom of will were taken away, many goods would be removed. Taken away, indeed, would be the praise of human virtue which is nothing, if man does not act freely. Taken away, also, would be justice which rewards and punishes, if man could not freely do good or evil. Even the careful consideration of circumstances and processes of deliberation would cease, for it is useless to dwell upon things that are done of necessity. Therefore, it would be against the very character of providence if liberty of will were removed. Hence it is said, God made man from the beginning and left him in the hand of his own counsel, and again, before man is life and death, good and evil, that which he shall choose shall be given him. Now, by these considerations the opinion of the Stoics is set aside, for they said that all things come about by necessity, according to an irrevocable order of causes which the Greeks called Epsilon Iota Mu Alpha Romeo Epsilon Nu Eta.